Um, so hi everyone, um, welcome to this CSAE Development Economics webinar. Um, I'm just going to go over um, a few of our rules to start with. Um, so we're really um, pleased to be able to um, welcome this week um, James Habiri Mana, um, who's going to be um, speaking to us. And so James will speak for about 45 minutes. Um, during this time, if you have any clarifying questions, can I please ask you to use the Q&A functionality and type in your question and then we'll decide um, whether there's an opportune time to ask uh, the speaker this or we might postpone it to a discussion at the end. Um, then at the end of James's seminar we'll have about 12 minutes uh, for more general questions and a, and a wider discussion. Um, during the question at the end we'll ask you to use the raise your hand function and we'll unmute you um, if we contact you to, to ask your question um, live. So thank you very much um, everyone for joining us. Um, I'm now going to um, hand over to James, um, who, as I said, is from uh, the University of Georgetown and is going to be, pre to be presenting um, to us today, High Hopes, Experimental Evidence on Financial Access and their Transition to High School in Kenya. So thank you very much and over to you, James. Thanks, Emma. Um, <clears throat> and thank you very much uh, to Simon and uh, Emma for the, uh, for the invitation to speak to you. Can you hear me okay? And see my screens okay? Excellent. Uh, that wasn't me. Um, anyway, uh, so this is, this is work that is courted with uh, Billy Jack, who's also online. Uh, and so uh, he's, uh, he's uh, been generous enough to offer his time to answer all the difficult questions that I can answer and um, uh, but I, 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 I'm very happy to do this and uh, let me uh, start off by uh, I guess motivating this work um, and I'd like to quote a, uh, a paragraph from a sentence from the uh, 2014 uh, Global Findex report that in some ways I think captures uh, kind of the reason uh, you know, the, the, the reason why we should worry and, and care about financial inclusion, uh, broadly speaking, there's, I think, uh, pretty broad literature in macroeconomics on uh, financial development and growth. And there's a, uh, a large and growing uh, literature on uh, uh, at the applied micro level. Um, and, you know, in some ways, I think people see this uh, yeah, in the same way that I think the macro people think about financial development and, and growth as essentially kind of a very critical uh, uh, set of uh, uh, tools to address uh, poverty. Uh, and, uh, and in general, I think you could say uh, that, you know, you know we, when we think about, you know, some of the work that a lot of folks uh, here are doing. So, uh, you know, I talked to Emma you know, earlier on about sort of uh, her work on, uh, on micro enterprises and, 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 uh, and, and finance. Uh, or, or in some ways, uh, when we think about, you know, at least the work that, that I'm going to be talking about uh, today on essentially kind of allowing people to uh, invest in, uh, in, in, in kind of long-term human capital. Uh, that, and, and, and of course, the, you know, the, the broader work that in some ways that a lot of uh, access to financial services uh, gives us in being able to, uh, to deal with, uh, with, with, with shocks. Uh, and, and we're in a, in a big shock at the moment. Uh, and so... Uh, in some ways, uh, while there's been a big expansion in, in financial access, uh, I think we're still quite a, f a little bit ways off, right? So the most recent uh, uh, 2017 data on the, this Findex report suggests that you know, only about 70% of people have access to a bank account uh, or, uh, or mobile money account. And in Africa, in some ways, the uh, you know, access to financial institutions is really happening largely through mobile. Uh, mobile money platforms. Uh, and so his, his data showing essentially kind of changes. You know, in a lot of countries, we see big increases in financial access. Here it's measured as uh, whether you have an account either with a formal financial institution or a mobile money account or both. Uh, and as you can see from these purple uh, bars across you know, a bunch of different countries, you know, in some ways, the purple and the light blue bars in some ways suggest that the mobile money revolution is in some ways uh, quite... Uh, uh, is, is this kind of the dominant way in which people are getting access to uh, to these accounts in in Africa? 
Um, and, you know, but I, I want to talk about in some ways a, a context. I think that, you know, the, the literature on getting people accounts, uh, you know, has generated some mixed results. Uh, and, you know, and sometimes, you know, people open accounts and for a whole variety of reasons due to fees and, uh, and essentially kind of, uh, you know, other barriers. Uh, that, you know, we haven't seen as, as much activity. So some of Pascaline's recent work in Malawi, Chile, and Uganda seems to suggest that, you know, when, you know, just opening an account is not enough. Okay. Uh, and I think the context in which we work, uh, you know, I think we were pretty eager to find a context in which there would be kind of a very, very specific uh, and predictable sort of, you know, future lumpy expenditure uh, in which essentially kind of we could actually sort of test whether giving people access to accounts uh, would actually sort of uh, alleviate uh, some of the liquidity constraints that uh, that essentially kind of rife in this domain as in other domains. Uh, you know, people don't buy mosquito nets. Uh, and, you know, there's some you know, work from, uh, from India that suggests, in fact, that providing credit actually sort of can increase the uptake of those things. And so, you know, so there's two, two, two aspects. One is that there's a future, predictable future expenditure. And the other is that, uh, you know, the account access that we provide is, is much more convenient uh, in a context in which people actually sort of understand uh, already kind of how mobile money works. Uh, they deal with, in some ways, uh, operators they trust, uh, and that's you know that's been sort of been critical to uh, kind of the uptake of some of these financial products. Uh, and you know, one of the you know key questions we ask in this in this context is you know how important is commitment uh, as a sort of commitment problems? Uh, you know, to what extent do they actually sort of uh, prevent people from uh, kind of uh, achieving their future goals? And so, you know, an important feature of this is we're going to essentially kind of vary access to a regular savings account, uh, and then one that has essentially kind of some, uh, essentially kind of, uh, you know, uh, provide some additional commitment uh, to, to save for uh, these future uh, interventions. We're also going to add some, uh, a, uh, you know, you know, some other work in, in, this, in this literature suggests that essentially kind of people have some attention uh, sort of problems. And so we're going to add some regular sort of weekly reminders to get people to save uh, for, for high school. And ultimately, I'd say in some ways, we want to ask uh, if, in fact, you know, providing access to these accounts uh, actually uh, you know, uh, affects the enrollment decision uh, in secondary school in Kenya. Um, that's in some ways kind of uh, you know, uh, an important context to work in, because I guess, as all of you know, this, you know Kenya has actually sort of been uh, kind of one of the um, trailblazers in essentially kind of rolling out mobile money platforms. Uh, you know, so the M-Pesa, which uh, you know a bunch of you are already working with. Uh, so I, I think Kate, uh, I talked to Kate earlier, and you know Billy has suddenly done a lot of work uh, in this area. It's, you know, started in 2007, um, and it was it's, it's largely kind of a domestic remittances platform. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, there's no deposit interest, there's no credit. Uh, it's essentially kind of just a, a bunch of pipes uh, for, for money to flow from, uh, and, you know, from one individual to the next. Uh, but what's kind of relevant for this work is that uh, in 2012, uh, you know, working uh, jointly with the Commercial Bank of Africa, uh, uh, the, the Safaricom started a mobile money savings account called Mshwari, uh, which in, in Shwari in Swahili really means uh, calm or peace of mind, uh, which is a kind of a savings account. And this actually does uh, bear some uh, small uh, amount of interest. Uh, so still still a lot lower than essentially kind of annual inflation, at least at the time when, when this happened. But you know, between you know, anything less than 10,000 shillings, you know, roughly $100, uh, you know, you'd earn 2%. And then there's essentially kind of an increment uh, uh, all the way up to 5%. Uh, and this, this account also provides uh, room for uh, credit. Uh, and I, there's quite a lot of work now on, you know, essentially kind of people looking at uh, algorithms to score and uh, sort of figure out how much uh, uh, people can, can borrow based on essentially kind of phone and other behavior. Uh, and, and we were super excited. In fact, you know, we'd been looking around for essentially kind of other uh, interesting context in which to essentially kind of uh, test these questions. Uh, when in, in 2014, in the middle of 2014, uh, they actually, you know, Safaricom added, or at least CBA added this lock savings account, uh, which adds, you know, provides essentially kind of uh, some additional uh, interest. Uh, and of course, in some, in some ways, the idea is that you, you essentially kind of keep your money in for 
uh, some integer number of months, uh, kind of you know what, one to six months, and you can of course unlock it after forty eight hours. But if you uh, if you do, you essentially kind of lose any uh, any, any interest that you would essentially kind of get. These two accounts are linked. Uh, and so you essentially kind of cannot get the lock savings account without getting uh, essentially kind of the savings account. Any questions at this point? I'm not seeing any questions from anyone. Okay. So yeah, please continue. Great, okay. So, so, so that in some, you know, so, so this setup is effectively sort of, we're going, we're going to try and sort of uh, leverage the rollout of this program uh, of, of, you know, of, I guess we're not leveraging, you know, this was available in 2014. Our study starts uh, in the middle of 2014. And in some ways we're gonna promote uh, essentially kind of these, uh, both of these savings accounts uh, across uh, essentially kind of our experimental arms. Just to give you a sense of uh, kind of how widespread and uh, successful uh, the Safaricom platform has been, I think that's a kind of an important uh, kind of, uh, feature of, of, of this context is that in some way people do are, are using and are familiar and as you'll see in, in, in our data, uh, you know, there's essentially kind of uh, quite a lot of experience with uh, the MPESA platform. And so, you know, the, that, that convenience and, you know, being able to understand how to operate these accounts is a, kind of a really important feature, I think, of, uh, of, of, of the result. And, and in fact, may explain a lot of the variation that one observes in, in, a, in this literature. So let me uh, provide a quick roadmap of what I will cover. Um, so I've given you a little bit of the background. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the experimental design um, and you know, tell you about essentially kind of the results on, on take up of, of the promotions that we, uh, that, that we, that we provide. And then uh, you know, talk about uh, the impacts of, of that promotion, both on account utilization, uh, uh, high school enrollment, and then, uh, you know, and then this is kind of the area where we, we, we're pretty eager to get uh, some feedback from you all uh, is in sort of trying to explain kind of the results uh, uh, that I'll present uh, in a minute. Okay, so in some ways the, the timeline of, of the study is really kind of defined by the academic calendar. Uh, and so our goal here is to try and, uh, and, and generate a sample of parents of, of kids who are in their last year of primary school they take the exams kind of at the end of November of 2014. Uh, they have a kind of a two month holiday and they essentially kind of start high school in, uh, in February. Um, you know, we started our recruitment in uh, the end of June of, of 2014. And so in some ways we have kind of about six months uh, between when we essentially kind of talk to parents and when they would essentially have to uh, make this uh, uh, essentially kind of this investment decision. Uh, and our goal is to essentially kind of say, you know, what happens when we promote uh, a bunch of, uh, of savings accounts uh, to these individuals. And, and in particular, when we essentially kind of try to, uh, you know, the, the, the lock savings account essentially kind of has a feature that you can choose uh, kind of the number of months uh, of, of in which you want to lock your savings. And we were very, very eager to try and get an, in our promotion was very clear to say we would like you to lock your savings in until essentially kind of you know a little bit after the new year uh, and, and in particular to essentially kind of try and prevent uh, folks from uh, essentially kind of uh, the temptation of uh, the, the holiday spending uh, at Christmas which is uh, which is I, I guess you know, you know everywhere is uh, and at least in Kenya is a, uh, is, is, a, is, a is a big uh, celebration. Um, and the idea is that you know after this this is unlocked that in some ways the parents can essentially kind of then purchase uh, the uh, the you know inputs uh, you know the you know, uniforms and uh, and for kids going to boarding schools mattresses and things like that now uh, in in, uh, in the month of January and before they start school at the beginning of February so that in some ways is kind of our timeline uh, our goal was to you know so we worked in three counties. These three counties were selected by, um, by another project. Uh, so we were working also with the Ministry of Education on some school sanitation work. Uh, and so they had selected these three counties to, uh, to, to do that work. We, in, in, in the same schools, we actually sort of look at different grades. So for this study, we look at the kids in the, in the finer grades. For the other study, we look at uh, younger kids. Uh, and so there's, there isn't any, well, 
you know, parents may have younger kids, so there may be some overlap, but we don't really interact with parents uh, very directly in that other study. And so in each county, we essentially selected about 120 schools. Um, there were about 20 schools that did not participate. Um, in the bulk of them because they did not have an eighth grade. So if you're in new school and you don't have an eighth grade cohort, uh, you know, we, we actually sort of didn't work there. And then a handful of schools, the parents didn't show up because uh, we invited them to a kind of a parents meeting to essentially kind of talk, talk about the study and do our baseline survey. And so uh, in a handful of schools, uh, they don't show up. So we end up with about 330 schools uh, in, uh, in the study. Uh, and, and we managed to get about 14 parents per school. So the sample size is, 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 is pretty decent. And we essentially have three study arms, uh, kind of a control group that, you know, I'll, I'll explain sort of what happens. The, the group that just gets the savings account, which has been around for a lot longer. And then the group that gets both the savings account and the lockbox uh, account. And it's really important to understand that you cannot get the lockbox on its own. Uh, it comes as a bundle uh, with a uh, link to the essential account savings account. Okay. Uh, and so what happens, so you know, if you try and get a sense of the geography, these are essentially kind of the three counties, uh, kind of Kilifi is, is coastal, uh, and then Nyeri is essentially kind of a couple hours from Nairobi, and then Kisumu is uh, kind of a pretty big city uh, in, uh, on, the, on the shores of Lake Victoria. Um, in, in terms of the design, so this is what happened at, uh, at each of the meetings. So uh, at each of the meetings, we essentially kind of explained that this is a study to try and uh, kind of help parents and you know, better plan for, uh, for secondary school uh, enrollment. Uh, and so one of the things that we do is we essentially kind of in the baseline survey, walk parents through essentially kind of what the costs of high school are gonna be. And so we get them to essentially kind of enumerate these costs. Uh, and I'll show you some of the data in, uh, in a minute. And that's, that's all that happens essentially kind of in the, in, the, in the control schools. In the treatment schools, we do essentially kind of the priming that we do in the control schools. Uh, and then essentially kind of, uh, you know, at the end of the prime and the, and the baseline survey, we essentially kind of promote adoption of this uh, mobile money account, uh, which, I'm, which I'm gonna call the MBA uh, for mobile money account from uh, here on. And then the second treatment, we basically promote uh, essentially kind of the lock savings account, of course, which entails uh, essentially uh, uh, the, uh, the, the MBA as well, okay? And so the promotion is, is, is uh, you know, involves both information, but also essentially kind of uh, allowing you to register on the spot, right? So you, you can get information if, if, as you will see, most of the people, the parents who show up uh, are, 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 are women. And so if, if in fact a, a mother is not sure that she wants to uh, sign up for this, she can get information to go home and essentially kind of be able to uh, sign up later on after she's had a uh, you know, chat with her spouse. Uh, uh, but in, in fact, you know, a good number of, uh, of, the, of the accounts that are open, in fact, are opened uh, essentially kind of uh, you know, at, at this event. Um, can I just ask a question, James? Sure. Um, can I ask, um, how onerous are the requirements in terms of signing up for the for the account? So did anyone have to both sign up for mobile money in the first place and then sign up for the account? Or if you say people took promotional materials home, is it quite a lot of steps or difficult for them to, to carry those out on their own? So I, I, I guess, you know, so I guess in some ways, you know, if you didn't have mobile money and you had a phone, so I, uh, there's an important sort of uh, uh, kind of uh, screen, which is to say that, you know, if, if you didn't have access to a phone, uh, that we did not actually talk to you. Uh, so in some ways, we, we do screen uh, here on parents who have uh, a phone and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and most of them, in, in fact, already have used M-Pesa or before. And so we actually don't do a lot of uh, registration for the mobile money platform. Uh, most, of, most of the essential kind of registration that happens here is for essential kind of these accounts, which is that the bank needs essential kind of you know, information from you. The Safaricom may have information about you on the mobile money platform, but in some ways the bank needs to be able to sort of link that information with your national ID uh, to in some ways, you know, be able to register you for these accounts. Mm -hmm. um, now you can also essentially kind of do this registration at home through essentially kind of USSD uh, codes. Um, 
but in but you know but for the, for, for the most part most of the a great majority as you'll see already had access to and, and were already using mpesa and so i would say for two or three percent we do actually sort of register them on the mobile money platform but mo most of most of them you know on the base you know just simply having have had a, a safaricom uh, uh uh phone was essentially kind of enough for them to have already been on the mobile money platform Um, and then so that the, the, the last in, intervention we run, which is in some ways, this is crossed over with all of the uh, other three treatments is uh, a weekly reminder for you to save, right? So, and we send you a message saying, this is how much you said you think you would need to raise to essentially kind of get your child into secondary school. Uh, and here's your reminder to save. And so, so both a reminder essentially kind of about how much you, uh, you, you, you thought you had to save and, uh, and uh, and 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 a reminder to save. So we don't we don't actually keep track of how much you're saving. It's just simply saying, you said you wanted to save four hundred dollars, uh, and you know here's your reminder. And so that's essentially kind of crossed over uh, the, uh, uh, the the other three treatments. So uh, just you know there are some uh, you know a lot of the data we rely on uh, is, you know comes from uh, the uh, the mobile money and and the banking platform, and so. Uh, we did have uh, quite a lot of, uh, you know, had to do some work to get people to uh, give us information and, and permission to actually sort of use the data. So in fact, we're only going to be showing you results for uh, the individuals who actually gave us permission uh, to use uh, the administrative data. The, the bank and the and Safaricom were pretty, uh, you know, uh, clear about, you know, making sure that everybody signed off uh, on this before we actually did this work. And so ADS, which you will see in a lot of the tables in some ways, you know, stands for the fact that, you know, these are the folks for whom we had uh, administrative, uh, you know, data sharing permissions. Uh, in general, the number to think of is, you know, we, we essentially kind of, uh, there's about 4,000 pay, 4,020 parents that we essentially kind of uh, talk to for whom we have baseline and ADS consent. Uh, and, and, and about, you know, we have, and I'll talk a little bit about attrition uh, at end line, uh, you know, we lose about, you know, 12 and a half percent of, uh, of, of, the, of the sample. I'll sort of get to that in a minute. The number in parentheses is uh, the number of schools in the, in, in the study. Uh, and the number in the square brackets is essentially kind of the number of kids. And so, you know, 4,020 parents, and there's about 4,264 4, kids. And so that gives you a sense, you know, there's some parents with multiple kids uh, in, in, in the final year of school. Um, in terms of, you know, study balance, the study is, you know, pretty reasonably balanced. I, you know, I just want to essentially kind of talk about, you know, a couple of uh, things over here. The first is to, as I indicated, you know, most of our sample are women. So about two thirds of the sample who showed up for these meetings and provided the ADS consent are essentially kind of uh, women. About 20% of them have completed secondary school. Uh, as you can see here, most of them own uh, a mobile phone. You can still be in the sample even if you don't own a mobile phone as long as you have access to one. Uh, and then of course, you know, conditional essentially having this, you know, a lot of them already have MPESA. And so, you know, there's a pretty large sample. So there's very little, uh, you know, promotion of the mobile money platform uh, that's also associated with this, uh, with this intervention. And then I guess crucially, you know, at baseline, quite about a quarter of the sample already have access to this Mshwari savings account. Okay. And, and so, and so that's, uh, that, 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 that suggests that, you know, there was some take up. And so this is a, a product that has, you know, had been around for at least two years. Uh, and, and in some ways, at least in, even in the sample, there'd been some reasonable take up, uh, which, which I think, uh, as you'll see a little bit later on, uh, is, uh, may, may have, uh, may explain essentially kind of some of the results we, uh, we get uh, with one of the treatments. Uh, and then if you think about essentially kind of, you know, the, the, the mobile balance, uh, I guess you want to think of the exchange rate, I, I keep forgetting this, was somewhere between 80 and 100 shillings. Uh, and so you want to think these are these are numbers in shillings, and so this is somewhere between, you know, uh, you know, six to eight dollars uh, in uh, in in the, in in the balance as of June thirtieth. And so this would be just before we actually sort of launched uh, our study. Um, 
in terms of the kids, uh, so so you know, so you know that that's in some ways kind of the parents' characteristics in terms of the I guess some some of these are essentially kind of kid level outcomes, and so for the multiple kids, we essentially kind of ask their parents about the expectation to enroll in in secondary school, and the expectations are very high uh, in some ways. This is kind of a, uh, you know, that it, virtually everybody thinks that the kids will go to secondary school. Uh, which of course is strange given that, you know, everybody knows that there's a big exam you have to take and you have to pass that exam. And uh, I'm sure pass rates are essentially kind of well known. So for example, this previous year's uh, transition rate, this is a school level uh, measure uh, is of only about 70%. Uh, and so, you know, whether this re reflects high hopes uh, is certainly you know, very strong aspirations uh, for, for secondary school. And then in terms of, you know, what the, the average expenses, expectations of the cost of secondary school uh, are, is this is about $415. Uh, so so 40,000 shillings, uh, you know, that's certainly kind of a, a, pretty, uh, a pretty large, uh, uh, you know, uh, expense uh, in general, it's certainly relative to uh, kind of the savings we observe uh, in, uh, in, in, in many of the accounts. So that's uh, the, so the balance is, is relatively okay. I mean, I, I haven't spent too much time talking about these columns. There are some, uh, there's, there's some imbalance in number of children uh, and, and we'll, we'll include a bunch of controls in our, in our, in our regressions for that. Uh, so, so at least on, on the study balance, I think that's fine. The, the, in some ways, the biggest concern that we have is that we do have imbalance in attrition. So an end line, uh, and and again, I guess you know this is something that's a feature of of, of having a small budget uh, in general, which is to say that you know the, we we didn't go to people's households to do this survey. Uh, we actually sort of invited them to the school, and we would do the survey at the school. Um, and and we actually have about you know twelve and a half percent of the sample not showing up uh, for the end line. Uh, we do the we do the end line in in two steps. So one is we invite parents over, and then uh, we uh, you know, having had permission, anticipating that this might be a problem, we actually sort of call those people who do not show up. Um, and as you can see, you know, sort of two treatments, you know, we have higher attrition between four and five percent, four and five percentage points uh, on a base of about 10 percent in the control group. And of course, that clearly is, uh, you know, that can certainly uh, is, can be fatal to essentially kind of the results that uh, we present in terms of the internal validity of the, uh, of, of our estimates. And so to try and uh, you know give you some confidence that in fact we think that the attrition is uh, is is not fatal to uh, to to our design. Uh, what we do is uh, using the control group only. Uh, you know, generate essentially kind of a lasso variable selection uh, sort of model to essentially kind of select the variables of you know parent characteristics, uh, parent child and school characteristics that predict uh, enrollment in uh, in secondary school. And then, uh, you know, in this panel from, you know, columns two uh, to the end, basically sort of look at the, the balance across essentially kind of only sort of restricting the sample to those who were trit. So if you look at these observations, a total of 501 parents are not observed. And that in some ways is the maximum sample size, you know, subject to essentially kind of missing data on, on each of these covariates. Uh, and I think, you know, the, you know, the, the, the story in, uh, in essentially kind of for, for these results is to say that, you know, the point estimates are generally very small uh, and, and, and none are essentially kind of uh, significant. But, you know, so, but, so I could say amongst the observables that predict uh, essentially kind of school enrollment, uh, we don't see big differences between essentially kind of a triggers in our treatment arms uh, relative to the control. Okay, so, but you know, in addition, and I won't present this today, but you know, we certainly have this in the paper. We also do a, a Lee bounds exercise for essentially kind of some of our key estimates uh, to essentially kind of, uh, uh, you know, give, give you a sense of the potential range of, uh, of, of uh, treatment effects. So the first thing I want to present is to say is to, to talk about the take up of, of these accounts in some ways uh, and take up here is that you actually open an account. Uh, and, you know, so I showed you earlier that, uh, you know, about 25% of the sample had a uh, had a, an, a, a mobile bank. In, so the MBA, so the left panel uh, is what I'm looking at. Uh, between June 30th and essentially kind of uh, the end of the year, when we essentially kind of uh, measure take up, uh, so until January 5th, when we measure take up, 
Uh, another sort of seven to eight uh, percent of, of the control group actually do open an account. So it sort of goes up to about 33 percent for this is kind of the control bar. Uh, and we observe essentially kind of, uh, you know, take up rates of an additional 20, nearly 25 percentage points. And so the MBA, so recall that the LSA arm also essentially kind of entails having a mobile bank account. And that's why these bars are essentially kind of the same height. Um, and so we see a pretty, uh, pretty significant uh, sort of increase in take up of, of the mobile bank account. And similarly, we see a kind of pretty uh, large increase of about 28, close to 28 percentage points. In, uh, in the take up of the uh, lock savings account. Okay, so you know these are these are you know pretty substantive uh, changes. It's kind of near, uh, almost a near doubling of the uh, kind of the fraction of people who have a mobile uh, bank account, and suddenly kind of a significant uh, take up for a product that is that's still very new. Uh, I mean, Safaricom was still running ads for essentially kind of the lock saving, you know, Safaricom and, and, and Bank of Africa, Commercial Bank of Africa was still running ads uh, for, for this product. So this was still kind of very much uh, kind of a brand new product. Uh, and so we, we get some uh, significant take up uh, there as well. Um, and then of course, you know, one key concern with a lot of these studies on, uh, on, on uh, promoting kind of, uh, you know, financial uh, access is that, you know, some of you people actually use these accounts. Uh, and so here's a kind of a picture, you know, this is just showing essentially kind of people who are using the accounts uh, in, the con in the control and the treatment arms. So, uh, you know, the dark blue line, if, you, if the colors are the same on your screen uh, at the top and the, and the dash line, uh, the red line below it essentially kind of are for uh, people essentially kind of in the MBA. So either the LSA or, or, or MBA arms. Uh, and so the dark blue line is is deposits. The 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 red line is withdrawals, you know. And this, of course, is is, is smoothed. Uh, so we have this. These are weekly, uh, essentially, kind of deposits and withdrawals, uh, but smooth essentially kind of over a three week period. Otherwise, it's essentially kind of uh, really messy uh, in general. But you know, but we do see essentially kind of deposits of about you know between one and two dollars a week, and then essentially kind of peaking in December around eight dollars a week. And so, you know, and I will show you some more concrete data in, in a minute and say, you know, in some ways people are using this, uh, uh, using these accounts. Uh, uh, you know, to give you a, a, a kind of, I guess, more, uh, you know, to look at all of the data and essentially kind of uh, um, show you both the, the intent to treat and essentially kind of the local average uh, treatment effect. If you look at the number of you know total deposits that are being made in these accounts uh, based on, and I should I should say something about uh, the way we define MBA and LSA exposure, uh, which is a little bit different than the way I've, I've defined MBA versus LSA. So MBA exposure is if you're in fact exposed to a savings account, which means that of course if you get a lock savings account, you're also are exposed to essentially kind of the the MBA account, and so this is. This is really kind of overlapping indicator structure in which an LSA exposure equal to one means that MBA exposure is also equal to one. But if you only get the MBA but not the LSA, then LSA exposure will be equal to zero. And so, and so the way to interpret the coefficient on LSA is to say relative to the people who got just the MBA only, this is essentially kind of the, uh, the effect of essentially kind of uh, being promoted uh, or at least being offered uh, or encouraged to essentially kind of open the LSA account. So as opposed to the, the traditional structure in which all of these coefficients are relative to the control group, uh, this is the only, you know, this is the only coefficient that is telling us essentially kind of the, uh, the essentially kind of difference with the control group. And this coefficient tells us the difference between uh, the, the other essentially kind of uh, savings account uh, only. Okay. So people deposit, you know, and I've, 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 I've added because, you know, shillings, not everybody thinks in shillings. And so in square brackets, I've added essentially kind of in some ways what these PPP, uh, uh, equivalent is in, in US dollars. Uh, and so, you know, people are depositing about you know, $53 more uh, if they essentially kind of uh, encourage to open a savings account. Uh, relative to that group, essentially kind of the people who essentially get the LSA uh, account also essentially about $22 less. Uh, if you, you think, you know, if we essentially kind of instrument for uh, actual uh, opening of an account, with uh, with the random assignment, then we you know these numbers this number actually you know so opening you know 
opening an account actually sort of increases deposits by about $200. Uh, and again, the LSA is essentially kind of about $80 less, right? So in some ways, you know, the, it, this is this is only kind of a scaling. We increase essentially kind of adoption by about 25 percentage points, and so in principle, you can sort of think about this as uh, you know multiplying this roughly by uh, by four. Okay. Uh, if we look at the number of deposits, uh, you know, you know, on, in the control group is making on average about 1.2 deposits. We see about you know three transactions uh, in the group that is a, um, that's essentially kind of way we, that is uh, exp uh, encouraged to open an MBA account. Uh, and of course, the you know the effect of opening the account actually sort of you know we see about you know seven uh, and a half additional uh, transactions there. For the LSA, you know you know the effects are essentially kind of a good deal smaller, uh, uh, and and you know the number of transactions is only about sort of you know one additional transaction, less than that, 0.8 of an additional transaction, uh, and the amounts essentially kind of deposited there are also uh, a good deal. Uh, sort of lower, so uh, in the in the in in the sort of the effect of opening the LSA account only sort of increases deposits there by about forty two dollars. And then finally, you know what you know opening any of these accounts, the MBA or the LSA, uh, in some ways gives you gives access to loans, uh, and we do actually see that in fact uh, uh, folks are actually sort of more likely to uh, take loans. You know the loan sizes are pretty small, uh, which I think you know would be expected given the way uh, essentially kind of uh, loan amounts are uh, calculated uh, in in this context. Uh, and so one would expect over in, in the di the dynamics of that to increase, uh, but we only see essentially kind of about uh, you know five five dollars in the ITT and about twenty dollars worth of loans uh, uh, on the, the effect of opening, uh, and. And, and so I'm going to come back to this uh, in in a, in a little bit because uh, you know I want you to keep in mind essentially kind of the the size of these effects so sort of, you know relative to uh, the cost of going to school. Uh, James, can I can I just ask a clarifying question on that? Yes, Chris. Yeah. Somebody with an LSA has two accounts. They have an MBA account and an LSA yes. account. Yes. Okay. So I should yeah. think of this as the net effect of the LSA adoption is the sum of the effect on the MBA account and the sum and, and the effect on the LSA account. In other words, that you've induced me to open an LSA account. I'm reducing what I'm depositing in the MBA, yes. but I'm increasing right. what I'm depositing in. I'm, some of that's I'm just shifting it over to the other account, right. and so, to the LSA account. Right. And so, yes. Yeah. And so, we, yeah, we, we're careful in essentially kind of the way we think about what is an MBA deposit and what's an LSA deposit. And so, if if you know if if you make a deposit to the LSA, in you know it it, it I think, and Billy can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it will go straight to the LSA account. Uh, but in general, we essentially kind of you know even if it went through the MBA account, we would essentially kind of be able you know separate out uh, what ends up in the LSA account and what is essentially kind of an MBA deposit. But in principle, you can move money in between the two. Okay. Thanks. Can I just ask um, one clarifying question um, here as well, which was about the schools um, mm -hmm. and whether the schools were all state schools, um, like private schools, and whether there was a lot of variation then in the, the fees that they charged? Oh, that's the secondary schools that kids go to or the schools that we're essentially recruiting from? Uh, the ones that they're going to go to. Oh, okay, so I'm going to come back to that. Uh, in, in general, the yeah, they, they, are, they are both public and private and, and, and you know, we'll... I'll show you that you know some parents don't always know uh, what what type of school they're going to, but uh, they usually know the difference between a private and a public school because I think the fee structure uh, is uh, you know is 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 clear uh, in general. But uh, yeah, I'll show that to you in a couple of slides. And you have just under ten minutes, oh, leaving yeah. enough time for questions. Okay. Okay. So let me let me let me uh, quickly. You know, I, I I'm close. Ten, ten minutes should be should be fine. Uh, so, so the first thing is to think about how we define savings in this context. We can observe very clearly uh, the savings that are on these two accounts, so the mobile bank account and the, and, and the lock savings account. Um, and we can also essentially kind of observe money that's sitting in the mobile wallet. Uh, and so we can essentially kind of think of that, you know, you know potentially as, as savings, certainly, you know, liquidity available to finance expenditures. Uh, I think what, what's challenging in our context is observing non-mobile uh, savings in other bank accounts, uh, even other mobile uh, essentially kind of uh, uh, bank accounts and wallets. Uh, and so what we do is uh, we, and, and because we had a very short time to do this survey, 
uh, in at, at baseline, we actually ask at end line, we ask essentially kind of about you know savings in each of these accounts, uh, both in August and essentially kind of in February of 2015. Right, so, so roughly kind of over the period of time where we think in some ways uh, essentially kind of savings would be accumulating to, uh, to essentially kind of pay for uh, school, uh, school expenses. And so these are, you know, so, some, some, you know, including advanced purchases, you know, family and friends, uh, is, you know, and so we ask about, you know, how much you had in savings across each of these categories. And, th and that, that allows us to essentially kind of be able to calculate kind of what we call gross financial savings, which is basically sort of mobile uh, uh, plus non-mobile uh, savings. The, the one reason we sort of, you know, the gross is hanging around here and I'm not gonna show you any net results is that, you know, when you get a loan from any of these accounts, you know, that loan is essentially gonna, gonna show up in your, uh, in your mobile wallet. And so it allows you to move it around there as well. I, I'm not gonna show you the results for, more, you know, gross versus net, but, uh, but I'm happy to talk about it uh, during the kind of Q and A uh, if, if folks want. So, here are the results on, uh, on, on each of these definitions. So again, this is just the mobile uh, money uh, bank accounts, LSA and MBA. This includes M-Pesa. This includes essentially kind of uh, non-mobile uh, savings. Uh, and we report two, two numbers. One is January 5th, when we essentially kind of allow people to open their lock boxes. Uh, I, there was clearly some variation. People did have a choice on whether they would uh, unlock, unlock them. January 31st is essentially kind of when we'd expect essentially kind of people uh, you know, to the extent that this is a labeled account, it's open in the context of, uh, of, of essentially kind of saving for secondary school. Uh, I think our expectations are at the end of January, these, these numbers are essentially going to be much, much lower uh, in general. But again, uh, you know, if you look at the ITT results, we only get, you know, an increase in savings about 500, uh, you know, 530 shillings, about, that's about 15 bucks, uh, you know, uh, on a on a kind of baseline of only about a hundred shillings, so it's you know relative to essentially kind of what happening in the control, this is a pretty large increase. But you know relative to the cost of schooling, it's not so huge. Uh, you know if you think about the ITT, that's only about fifty dollars uh, relative to you know a, an anticipated cost of schooling of about you know four hundred. Uh, and so that's something to think about. The numbers you know do fall, uh, but they essentially kind of don't drop to essentially kind of the very low levels that we'd expect, in fact, for people who are in search of financing schooling uh, in general. Uh, and so this suggests perhaps that in fact, these, these accounts may be being used for other things other than essentially kind of financing school, but uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, we don't see essentially kind of, you know, the one reason to think, you know, want to have these, you know, look at these two numbers is to say, you know, you know people are not just shifting money that is in their wallet to essentially this, you know, this is, I, you know, this looks like actual saving. Uh, and in fact, you know, we also don't see any big drops from other non-mobile savings in general. So it looks like, in fact, uh, you know, the having, you know, uh, having this account actually sort of crowds in additional savings. Uh, you know, we should also point out, of course, that this is th these these measures of savings are very noisy. Uh, you know, we had to ask folks to essentially kind of do some recall. You know, price a bunch of assets, uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, and so you know. That, 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 that's, that, that's the caveat, but we, in some ways, the numbers are essentially kind of all going in the direction of the, the fact that promotion of these accounts actually this does seem to increase, uh, increase uh, savings. Um, now, now to essentially kind of look at uh, essentially kind of the effects on enrollment, and I'm just gonna you know, focus here on the intent to treat results. Uh, you know, we can come back to uh, you know, the, the kind of the, the, the local average treatment effect. You know, we find, some pretty, you know, sizable increases in uh, in enrollment uh, in in secondary school. So remember, we do our end line in February when when kids have already in, uh, uh, enrolled. So we do it, uh, and and so we ask parents, you know, where is your, you you know, is your child enrolled in school, uh, and if so, what kind of school uh, are they enrolled in? And I'll come back to essentially kind of Emma's question in a, in a little bit because I think it's a bit of a uh, I think a piece of the puzzle uh, that, that we have to, uh, to, to, to solve. And then we also look at essentially kind of whether the, the uh, exposure or at least the promotion actually affected uh, sort of uh, performance on the, on the final exam. We collect the final exam data from parents, but also from the schools who, who typically post the results of essentially kind of their previous cohorts on, on their notice boards. Uh, and so the passing score is essentially kind of, you know, if you get, I think it's a maximum score 400, uh, sorry, 500, and the passing score is 200, and the qualifying score is 250. Uh, we don't see essentially kind of any effects, at least on uh, on, on that margin. 
Um, and, and in some ways, you know, one, one particular concern that we have, of course, is that, you know, perhaps a lot of, you know, what these folks are telling us is, you know, uh, in some ways reflective a bunch of uh, desirability bias uh, or, or experimental demand effect. Um, and, and so one, one test for this is to say, you know, you know for one group of people we, who we were interacting with for over 20 weeks, where we're sending them weekly reminders, uh, it doesn't look like, in fact, essentially kind of, you know, sending that interaction with the experimenter actually sort of has any effect on the enrollment decision. Uh, it, it does look like if you look at the interaction between the reminders and who had the accounts, that there are some, uh, you know, some, some positive effects. Uh, is essentially, kind of if you look at the interaction between MBA exposure and the SMS reminder, but in some ways, the sign of the LSA and SMS reminder interaction is essentially, in some ways, goes, uh, you know, if, if in fact we thought that, you know, this SMS reminder was actually sort of getting people to use these accounts more. Uh, we actually sort of don't see that in, uh, in, in this, uh, the sign of this, uh, this particular coefficient. Um, now, let me essentially kind of go to the question of schools, because in some ways, I think that was one of the things that essentially kind of quite important. So remember that, you know, parents tell us that, you know, the roughly the, the cost of schooling is about 40,000, which is over there. Uh, but of course, their schools in, in Kenya essentially kind of vary in terms of their costs and, and you know, you know, there is a schedule somewhere, but in some ways, you know, this is data from uh, our sample that probably reflects the kind of schools that the, 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 the uh, our population is exposed to. You know, national schools are essentially kind of, you know, the you know, pretty well-known established, you know, high schools in, in Kenya. Uh, those are essentially gonna tend to be more costly because they tend to be boarding schools, uh, sort of broadly speaking, so people travel to those schools. You know, county schools also, be, also tend to be boarding schools because they draw on essentially kind of People who live quite far away. Uh, they're also a little bit more expensive. They're also, you know, as I'll show you in a minute, you know, they're a little bit more selective. So most of our kids are not going to those schools. Uh, what we actually observe is, you know, the majority of our kids are actually sort of going to district, sc district schools where the interquartile range is somewhere between 15 and about 33,000 shillings. So it's, it's a good deal lower than, uh, than, uh, than the cost of, of schooling that's reported at baseline. And then the other, the other place that, you know, you know, most of our parents are going to are these community schools, which are also essentially a little bit, um, uh, a little bit cheaper. Now, there are quite a lot of parents who can't tell the difference between the school their kids are going to. And so we have a category here that has do not know uh, uh, because, you know, parents want to able to essentially kind of uh, decide across uh, these categories uh, what, uh, parents, uh, what, what, what schools their kids were going to. Uh, and what we do is in some ways say, okay, well, you know, perhaps, you know, you know, what matters here is not so much the, you know, are people able to save $400, but in fact, do they have enough money to essentially kind of start school, you know, this year. And so what we look at is to essentially kind of look at this, just the mobile balances only. Uh, and so for, you know, forget all of the other additional savings and look at essentially kind of the fraction of, uh, of, pa of, of parents across the three arms that actually have at least 15,000, which is essentially kind of at the lower end of that interquartile range, or essentially kind of 20,000, which is somewhere in the kind of the middle of that range. And there we actually sort of see that in fact, you know, and, and now I'm not look, I'm now defining MBA and LSA as essentially kind of the two distinct arms. So now uh, think about these exclusive groups as opposed to the overlapping structure. Uh, and here we see that in fact, you know, you know, MBA arm has, you know, it's only about a percentage point more and it's, you know, significant at the 10% level uh, and having at least 15,000. And similarly, for essentially having at least twenty thousand shillings, there is essentially kind of some some evidence that you know these MBA accounts actually allow you to at least have that level of liquidity, and that might just be enough for you to get started. It's still perhaps not explaining everything, uh, you know, given that you know we see gains of about five uh, five to six percentage points. Uh, you know, this is kind of you know I could I could do this across all of the uh, the categories of schools we see. Only three percent of kids actually go to these national schools. Uh, in our sample, the majority, so you know, about you know, about forty percent of kids go to these district schools, and then about essentially kind of you know, uh, eighteen percent of these kids, uh, sorry, so about sixteen percent of the of the kids go to these county schools, uh, and you know, we see some effects. You know, it's clearly you know, much much larger, but this is about a five percentage point effect of going to a county school, uh, if you essentially kind of assign to the uh, to the essentially LSA or the uh, or the mobile banking arm. Uh, but no effects essentially kind of on these other schools. Um, and, and, you know, one 
you know, one key question, of course, that we, that we have is to say, you know, what's, you know, what's going on here. And so, you know, one could do a, a form of mediation analysis uh, and, uh, and, and, and sort of in lieu of that mediation analysis, I'm only gonna sort of show you a picture that uh, kind of a local linear regression where we take all of these different measures of uh, financial engagement, sort of, you know, the number of deposits you make or the sort of the, the size of the deposits uh, on your account at the beginning of, uh, uh, the beginning of January, uh, the, you know, the, your gross savings, which includes uh, essentially kind of non-mobile uh, uh, non savings, your loans, uh, or essentially kind of uh, your mobile balance. And, and you know, I'm going to regress that essentially kind of against the fraction of kids who are essentially kind of in, uh, in uh, who enroll in school. And you know, except for essentially kind of a bunch of large uh, disk saving, you know, a small group of disk savers, you know, a lot of these relationships looks, you know, uh, you know, arguably, arguably positive. You know, that you know, some you know, more more engagement seems to essentially kind of be associated with uh, with with high enrollment. But you know, there's still kind of a puzzle that says, uh, you know, that you know the amounts of uh, savings we observe are essentially kind of much much lower than uh, lower than essentially kind of the costs of of, of schooling. And so the, you know, there are lots of stories we can tell. Uh, one of which is to say maybe a lot of parents were very close to the threshold, and we just don't actually sort of measure. Uh, and we can observe essentially kind of the fact that they were just you know very close, and so what they needed was the other you know fifteen dollars to get them over the edge. Uh, alternatively, I think one could think of other behavioral uh, sort of explanations, which is to say that, uh, you know, perhaps the engagement with this account actually sort of triggers either aspirations or greater commitment uh, to secondary school. But let me conclude because I'm sure that I'm, I've, I've exceeded my 10 minute allocation uh, a, a little bit. I want to give uh, in, enough time for questions. Um, so the first is to say that, in fact, we, we do see significant adoption and utilization of these accounts. I think the context is really important. Uh, you know, the, the fact that this is a, this is a platform that's well known uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and trusted. And so we actually sort of in that sense uh, uh, working in a domain where we should sort of be seeing some action. Uh, and, and we also see some, you know, uh, you know, increases in savings, even though in fact they are, you know, relatively small to the, you know, relative to the cost that we actually sort of trying to, uh, we're trying to get parents to save for. Uh, we observe, changes in school enrollment, uh, albeit in these uh, cheaper and more select less selective district schools. Um, I, I didn't you know, show you the results on, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, one, you know, so uh, I, I did show you the results on attention. The SMS doesn't seem to, I, I guess I didn't show you the results on attention to, for sa and, and savings. You know, the SMS doesn't seem to boost uh, savings uh, in, in, in the accounts. And, and we also don't see a lot of action on the lock savings account, uh, you know, admittedly the, the the strength of this commitment on the lock savings was not really huge. You could break it, you know, after forty eight hours and just lose one percent, an additional one percent, and so maybe that's uh, kind of not a fair test of essentially kind of the commitment uh, story. Uh, but the fact that we get these changes in in savings uh, that don't quite line up with essentially kind of the expected cost, you know, may suggest that they are other behavioral channels uh, that explain uh, kind of the changes in, uh, in schooling we observe. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for uh, of a, going over longer than. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you very much, James, um, for that fantastic um, presentation. So we'll have about five minutes now um, of question time. Um, so please uh, raise your hand if you have a question. I see um, Kate Orkin as the, the first hand raised. So Kate, if you want to go ahead. Um, thanks, James. That was uh, really, really interesting to see. Um, I was just interested in the, the concluding bit, and I wondered if you could unpack a little bit more um, why we don't think that there's a commitment might be the the mechanism because I, I think the thing that was really surprising to me is how um, you know a lot of the other literature suggests a lot of people are quite naive and don't demand commitment even though they they do actually need it that they struggle to save and it seemed like here you're finding the opposite that people do really anticipate that this is going to be an issue um, so they're you know taking up quite a lot and then um, you know using using the account quite a lot to save. Um, yeah, so it was because it seemed to me like that might be a plausible mechanism. Yeah. Um, do you want me to answer, or do I take a few questions and an answer in a? You can answer straight away. 
Okay, so so I, you know I, you know that's a, that's a good point, Kate. I, I you know the first thing is to say we, we don't actually collect a lot of information on sort of you know and the variation on who is naive and who may actually sort of have <clears throat> more of these commitment uh, problems in general. Uh, you know, and and also I think our baseline treatment of essentially kind of walking through the costs of schooling with parents, I, I think, you know, you can think of it as, as kind of a treatment across the, across the whole board. I, it's, not, it's, it's not like they told us that they knew this ex ante. We just basically sit down and say, okay, what do you think it's gonna cost for the fees for, you know, transport and so on. Uh, and then we add them up. And so in principle, uh, you know, I think the reason I said, you know, the commitment is, is, is not strong enough, you know, on, you know, first of all, you know, when, when people have a lockbox and they can put money away for six months, uh, we don't see essentially kind of a big uptake uh, in, in people using those accounts. Uh, you know, they, 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 it was, I think it was 475 shillings at the ITT is much, much lower than essentially kind of the MBA. Uh, I think that, you know, one other, one additional concern uh, and, and maybe is, is to say, you know, these were new accounts. These have just been rolled out literally a month before, you know, uh, you know, when we started promoting them. And so it is, it is possible that in some ways there is, you know, the, you know, there's some knowledge about essentially kind of how well it works and will you be able to open it, uh, you know, in other domains, I think, when, you know, if you think about Pascaline's work, I think people may have had a bit more confidence that in fact that lockbox, uh, you know, uh, would, would, would be available. Um, and so, so I think that our, our, you know, that conclusion comes from the fact that we don't think, we don't see a lot of uptake for this uh, essentially kind of what is a, a commitment uh, technology. Uh, but in fact, there, there could be lots of other reasons for it. And I also want to, you know, I need to say that, you know, it was not super strong, uh, this, the, the commitment uh, that entailed in this account. And I think Safaricom was pretty eager to essentially kind of get people to use it. And so, you know, making an essentially kind of a, a strong commitment uh, was seen as essentially kind of, at least at the, at, at the outset, as uh, essentially kind of uh, uh, depressing the bank. Uh, so next we have um, Adrienne Lees, if you want to um, say your question live. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hi, James. Thanks so much for this very interesting presentation. I just wondered if, they, if you had been able to see whether there were any gender differences based on the gender of the account holder, because there seems to be a literature suggesting that women behave quite differently when it comes to saving decisions, particularly for education investment. And I wondered whether that was something you'd studied. Yes, yeah, so we did look at it in a previous version. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to kick that over to Billy if he, if he, if he remembers. So we, we know, so first of all, most of our, our sample is, is predominantly uh, women. And so it's hard for us to observe ultimately, you know, whether the accounts that were being used were, you know, belong to the spouse operated by the, by the, by the, by, uh, uh, by the parent who showed up. Uh, or not, and so, but I do, I do, I do recall some differences, but they're not very large, uh, if if I remember correctly, I, by by gender. I'm staying on mute. <laughs> okay. I, I, All right. I, thank I, you very much, though. That's my recollection too, James. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Can, Can I only have time for one more question? Uh, yeah, I can hear someone. Go ahead. Um, Sorry, Emma, it's me. Um, oh, I've not that, I've yes. pulled my hand up button. Um, hi, James. Um, thanks for this. It was, it was incredibly interesting. Um, I want to ask a question about um, the hope over expectation moment that you said something about. That is to say, all of them suggest that their children might go to school, might mm -hmm. go to secondary school, but this is obviously rationed. Mm -hmm. um, so on the margin of those who might are more likely to go. So I wondered if you had information on, you know, past results or potential to attend or, or something of the kind. Would, do you think you might have made a difference on that margin? I, I, I can imagine, given the structure, you're not going to be able to speak to the size, but... Yeah, so, so the, only, the only question we asked at the beginning was to say, you know, is, do you think your child is essentially kind of above average in their class? And, and you know, we actually, we, we were surprised, you know, this was, you know, we, this was not Lake Wobegon where everybody was above average. You know, it's only about 30% of parents actually report that, you know, their kids are above average. Uh, and I think we're, we're interested in some ways observing, at least when we're looking at the, quali the, 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 the national exam results, we don't see any, any action on you know essentially kind of you know some better performance in the places in, in the in the households where in fact 
you know, kids may have thought they have a better chance now of being able to go to secondary school. Uh, and so, no, I, I don't think we have any other way of, uh, yeah, no, it, it, not, nothing, you know, those are the only two pieces of data I think we could potentially use to essentially address, uh, address, address that question. Uh, and so we could we could look we could look uh, at heterogeneity by essentially kind of whether you thought your kid was uh, was was you know uh, performing above average or not. Uh, but I but I but I'm not sure I'm not sure if that answers your question. No, I, that's exactly what I was asking because it seems to me that you know to persuade uh, to to obtain a large uh, margin on savings for. Um, getting them to secondary school when really, you know, you might well know that the, that this is unlikely, even if you would hope that they might by some right. Right. right, yeah. So what we should have asked is to say, essentially, kind of rather than above average, we should have really asked, like, you know, do you think your kid is in the top, in the in the bottom, uh, essentially, kind of quartile of essentially kind of in his class, and that that would have given us a sense because, in yeah. some ways, about you know. At least historically, in those schools, about 25% of kids were not going to school, or were not essentially enrolling in secondary school. Uh, and of course, and, and in fact, if you ask many of the parents, "Why did your child not go to school at the end line?" You know, most of them say, "You know, the kid didn't do well enough." Uh, and and so, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have any data ex ante. Yeah, yeah, because I I do recall both on, in the Pakistan work and the Zambia work, people were able to parents were able to judge um, right. their right. children's ability rather well. So that might right. have been no, that was that was that was a missed opportunity on our part. Uh, so I think we are out of time now. We're already a little bit over. Um, so sorry, we can't have any further questions. Um, but thank you so much, James, um, for your presentation. I mean, I certainly really enjoyed it. I think everyone here did. So um, thank you very much um, for joining us. And I wanted to just mention um, for everyone that next week um, we will have another webinar at the same time. And we're going to have um, Anna Panin from the World Bank presenting Time for Tea measuring discounting without the utility confound. Um, so I hope that many of you can join us for that as well. So thank you everyone and, and thank you James especially. No, th thank you all for, uh, for staying and thank you for, uh, for the invitation. It was a lot of fun.